Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Joman. So, um, I played, uh, if you'll recall, I had my single-player campaign of Joman going for a while, uh, which ended up abandoned. Uh, I just sort of lost interest in the single-player aspect of the game. The limitations of Joman were sort of frustrating me. What's funny about me is that the fact that those frustrating limitations exist actually makes me more interested in playing this nation in multiplayer. And a new multiplayer late-age game is starting up. I recalled that some of you had expressed interest in seeing more late-age gameplay. So uh, I thought I would... I am going to join that game as a Joman to see if I can kind of make him work. And uh, I'm not sure whether I'll record the whole game or not and post it. Uh, I have a couple of other things, including non-Dominions things, that I want to get up on the channel pretty soon. Some of the old classic games. So we'll see if this goes up, but I at least wanted to kind of take a second more detailed strategic look at Joman. Joman is an interesting nation that's plagued by some very serious problems. Um, the first and most obvious is their troops, and the fact that they exist in the late age. Joman is basically a, f a pretty solid early age nation in the late age, and the reason, or middle age nation even, would be pretty decent. And the reason basically is one of the obvious reasons is crossbows. So in the late age, as compared to the earlier ages, uh, populations are higher, so income and resources are higher. Magic sites are less common, so gem incomes tend to be a little bit lower until later on in the game, uh, which effectively buffs blood magic relative to everything else because blood slaves are actually more common since there are more high population provinces and successful blood hunting is dependent on population level. And um, weapons and armor are more advanced. In particular, in the late age, there are plenty of independents and other nations that have access to crossbow units, which is a real problem for Joman because as you will recall, no Jomanese unit uses a shield. They're all fairly high resource cost and they're all fairly well armored except for the Ashigaru. Even the Ashigaru doesn't have bad armor. But that's not exceptional in the late age, and what is exceptional is that none of them have shields. So if you look at like Abyssia, Abyssia has heavy infantry with tower shields and even higher protection. If you look at Satis, Satis has city guard with light armor but shields, so they can repel... Um, arrow fire, and they have heavy infantry with high protection and shields, and a much lower resource cost, interestingly, than Jomanese infantry, only 15 compared to Joman's, say, samurai, which are 22, despite having lower protection and no shield. Uh, just an interesting little thing. Uh, in any case, shields are really, really common. Uh, even these Sakmuk warriors have shields. Uh, the Zots don't, but Zots aren't really very powerful. Um, Erythrean units have shields. Everybody, there's shields all over the place. And a big part of the reason for that is that crossbows are also all over the place. Marignan can recruit crossbowmen, which are, of course, armor-piercing and long-ranged. Uh, Ulm can recruit crossbowmen. Their rangers of Ulm are actually extremely good crossbowmen. Uh, Agartha can recruit crossbowmen and light crossbowmen, crossbowmen, and heavy crossbowmen, which use the Agarthan steel crossbow that does more damage. I think they all use the Agarthan steel crossbow, actually. So, yeah, they've got lots of different crossbow options. Uh, Pangea even can recruit crossbowmen in the form of satyr snipers that have crossbows. Uh, I don't think Utgard has crossbows. Utgard doesn't have archers. Um, but there's a lot of nations that do. Tianqi has standard archers as opposed to crossbows. But even then, they're composite bows that are pretty solid. So basically, the fact that Joman has this universal extreme weakness to missile weapons is a serious problem for their troop lineup. Uh, because, of course, any nation that doesn't have access to national crossbows can still just recruit independent crossbows, because there are independent crossbows in a lot of places. And independent crossbows can legitimately and sadly be like an actual problem for Jomanese expansion. Just because they don't have good answers to crossbows. The best answer Joman has to crossbows is, is probably massing samurai archers, which have a long-ranged, fairly accurate, reasonably high damage longbow attack that adds, you know, it does 12 damage, so it can punch through protection on non-super heavy crossbows, like a Garthan heavy crossbowman would absolutely outshoot samurai archers, but 
then a Garth and Heavy Crossbow would even cost a few more resources. Uh, most crossbows would not, like Marignon. Marignonese crossbowmen with 9 protection would get torn to shreds by samurai archers because they fire only half as quickly. And so with twice as many arrows, even though they're not armor-piercing, they can ping through 9 protection and do reasonable damage. So, there's options, but they're not very good options. Uh, Jomanese sacreds are not great. The Sohei are pretty decent. Uh, they have decent skills, they have very high morale, which is good. Their magic resistance is not exceptional, and their combat speed is slow because they wear heavy armor. Or rather, they wear average armor for the area, but it for the era, but it slows them down. Their damage is quite high, however, so if you can get their attack boosted somehow, Sohei are very solid troops. Uh, Yamabushi would be really, really good troops, except they have low morale and they're undisciplined, which makes it a real problem to use them effectively. Uh, magically speaking, Joman is not strong. I mean, it says right here, magic weak. Uh, Joman's best mage is the Onmyoji, who is slow to recruit, two astral, and two unlinked randoms. So, not actually all that useful unless you can set up a communion. It does have Fortune Teller, which is kind of cool, and Spirit Sight, but not very useful. I mean, cheap, but not very powerful. Master Shugenjas, slightly more expensive, still not expensive, and for the price, Master Shugenjas are okay. Um, they have unlinked randoms, however, which means that a lot of them end up being fairly worthless in combat. Like, if you get, you know, one earth, one nature, one fire, and one air, oh, brother, you're not really going to accomplish much in your life. I mean, magically speaking, you're just not good at things. So they're only really useful if they either happen to hit the 4% uh, chance of getting two of something here, or they get at least two earth or two nature. Um, Master Shigenjas that get, the, get their paths scattered all over the place, and a lot of them just are not good at things. Um, regular Shigenjas have even worse odds. At least 20% of them are Earth 2, but that means that 80% of them just aren't good at anything. Uh, I tell a lie, fire random ones can cast magma bolts. And of course there's ways you can give them booster items, you can give them gems to cast buff spells, there's, there's ways to make them minimally useful. But in general, Shugenjas are not combat mages. Some of them are summoners, but also not all of them by any means. Monks of the Fivefold Path would be pretty solid because Jolman has national holy spells, the, the five gestures, so every monk can cast one of the gestures. But the problem with that is they have zero leadership, so they can't actually lead armies in any useful way which means that Monks of the Fivefold Path are sort of regulated to being recruited and used later in the game when they can act, you can't actually use the gestures effectively. Um, if they had 10 leadership, Monks of the Fivefold Path would be critical to Jomon's early expansion because he would take a heavy bless on Sacreds and lead them with Monks of the Fivefold Path. Since they don't have that, Expanding with sacreds as Joman is very difficult because you don't have your sacred leader is the Kanushi, who has holy too but can't cast a gesture, and so your sacreds remain extremely vulnerable to arrows. Joman does have, of course, their powerful underwater units. Uh, the Ryujin is arguably one of the best mages in the late age in terms of raw power. Not communionable, but with a, a two linked random in an elemental path plus three water, those are pretty solid. Plus, he gets an automatic temporary water gem all the time. And it's... It's a very, very good unit. It's slow to recruit, but the big problem is that you can only get him underwater. And getting underwater as Joman is horrifically difficult. Uh, crab generals are just underwater leaders. They're very tough, which is nice. Of course, you've seen Shark Warriors in action. Shark Warriors are great. Shrimp Soldiers, even Shrimp Soldiers are not bad. They're pretty solid. They do a lot of damage. They have decent defense skill, high protection, higher than human hit points. They're solid. Uh, and Shark Warriors, of course, can are amphibious, so they can even come out onto the land. Uh, so the issue really is the magic and the shields. Um, if Master Shugenjas had linked randoms, they would be a very solid mage. If... 
Shugenjas had a second random, they would be a much more solid mage. If Monks of the Fivefold Path had 10 leadership, they would be a good sacred leader slash mage. If, 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 if. None of these things are true. And so Joman really does suffer. Now, the thing that is cool about Joman is, of course, their national summons. They have a lot of national summons, some of which are very useful. Karasu and Konoha Tengu summon you holy, I'm sorry, sacred flying units that do very, very well. Uh, later on, you can summon Dai Tengu, who can, uh, who are powerful air wizards and also come with a whole bunch of Tengus by themselves. Uh, Nushi, reasonably solid. Kaijin, very similar to Ryujin, actually. Very, very useful. Um, Ujigami are quite useful. Uh, as are... What's the other one down here? Uh, Kenzoku. Kenzoku are actually good thug chassis. Um, Kitsune are powerful mages and they're spies, which is nice. So there's lots of, lots of good summons that Joman has access to. There's lots of ones that they can't actually cast effectively. And there's lots of ones that are very situational. Nushi, situational because they're homesick. So you can't take them out of their home province. Ujigami, uh, good. They lose some of their holy magic if they leave where they're summoned, but pretty good. Uh, Mori no Kami, not really useful because they lose a bunch of their magic if they leave the forest. That said, it is pretty cheap for what you get, so there's that. So, in order to play Joman effectively, you have to kind of take into consideration the fact that A, they have powerful amphibious units that you might never see because you don't have any national way to get underwater. B, your troops will need some kind of protection. Uh, you can't rely on them to win fights because as simple a tactic as a big chunk of crossbowmen with flaming arrows cast on them will waste a Jomanese army unless it is significantly reinforced with something. Uh, and you're going to have to recruit a ton of mages to get useful ones. And your mages are not hugely efficient researchers. So for my money, when you're playing Joman, probably you want magic scales, and probably you want an expanding pretender. Now, here's the problem with that. Joman doesn't have any good expander options. None of these are great at it. Um, they don't have the Dracon, they don't have the Myrmicoleon, they have the Earth Serpent, and the Earth Serpent is a pretty decent expander, just because it's big and fat and almost invincible, if you bless it right. But Joman doesn't really want to take an Earth Serpent with an expansion bless, because the Earth Serpent expander bless is like Earth and Nature. Joman already has Earth and Nature, that's pretty much the one thing it does have reliably. What Joman doesn't have is good sacreds that can benefit heavily from that kind of a bless, or a way to get underwater. And both of those Joman really, really wants. As bad of an idea as it is to focus on getting underwater, if you can get underwater, that's huge. Sight Vengeance. Oh, the Kami of the Sun just has an, an eye shield at all times. Huh. Actually, the Kami of the Sun might be a decent expander if you could get her some protection. Because High Awe plus Sight Vengeance. Hadn't thought about that. Had never really considered a Kami of the Sun. The problem is the low protection. She would get killed by archers and crossbows very, very easily. In melee, very tough, but murdered by archers and crossbows. Anyway, so there's a few different ways you can go with Joman. One way is to give up on the idea of expanding with the Pretender, because if you look at your units, against other players, your units will struggle very, very badly. Against independence, armies composed primarily of samurai archers can actually do a lot of work, because they have long range, they have decent precision, and samurai archers are pretty good in melee. I mean, samurai archers are effectively a medium infantry unit that also has a good ranged attack. You need a lot of resources for them, so I would take production. Um, and, of course, growth, because you always want to take growth. After that, maybe you want to take, like, a dormant or imprisoned god and focus on scales, because Joman does benefit from scales quite a bit. Um, if you take the Idol of Men, for example, the Idol of Men gives you 
air and nature, which are the paths you need to summon some of your important national summons. Uh, or the idol of beasts, even. Um, if you give it earth, then you can additionally use it once it wakes up to forge uh, staffs of elemental mastery, which will help your your mages a lot. Like, a Master Shugenja desperately wants boosters, and given that they're likely to have very scattered paths, they desperately want boosters that hit multiple lines at once to make them able to cast higher level spells and cross path spells. So, it might be worth thinking about like an Idol of Beasts, Dormant, say six or five Dominion, because you're not focused on Sacreds, take Magic three, um, maybe go up Heat once or twice. You don't really need, I mean, you don't really need much income because your troops are not uh, expensive in terms of gold, they're expensive in terms of resources. Except for the Samurai Cavalry, which is okay but isn't great. Doesn't get a trample attack. So maybe you do something like this. Get some air, some nature, and some earth. If you go, I mean, I'm just spitballing here. If you go four across, all across, um, you can get some kind of bless. I didn't mean to click unaging. Although, honestly, your Onmyoji are not old. Aren't your Master Shugenjas pretty close to old? Eh, they're not too close to old, especially because they have nature magic. Maybe you don't have an old mage. I thought you did. In any case, um, don't focus on the bless with this, but get some paths. Like, this allows you to forge the air booster. These two allow you to collectively to forge the um, staff of elemental mastery. That will allow you to cast Mother Oak, which is pretty cool. And then with this... With this, you might be able to do something. You could consider going into Misfortune in order to get another scale there or something like this. Your weakness will be the early game because Jomon's weakness is getting rushed down and just murdered because they don't really have anything to stop that from happening. Um, you can try some things to change that a little bit. Uh, alternatively, if you do want to use Sacreds, the Idol of Men gives you Fire. And with fire, you can boost attack skill to make your Sohei's actually really tough. There's different ways to do that. So taking a dormant immobile might be a good idea with Joma. Just because you don't have good expander chassis in any case. You do have this guy. Who is an interesting little rainbow chassis. He's really, really cheap. So if you want a rainbow... Uh, the Onmyo Hakase might not be a bad choice, especially because you could take him, start him dormant, and once he wakes up, you have all kinds of magical access that normally you don't have. Um, and I think he's, yeah, he's the cheapest rainbow for Joma. If you do want to expand, and you want to go underwater, I think there's really only one option. Some people try using the Celestial Carp, because the Celestial Carp has this grab and swallow attack. The problem is, the Celestial Carp is Protection 8 and Defense Skill 5 and doesn't have any defensive paths, so you have to give that to him for extra points. So taking him means you absolutely destroy your scales, and then he probably dies anyway. If you want to expand, and especially if you want to expand underwater, I think your only real choice is the Dragon King. The Dragon King has relatively low hit points, but he has good protection, good defense and attack skills, and of course he flies, so he can attack rear, with his multiple attacks. Multiple attacks are critical for expanders. If you take a Dragon King, uh, he has he's a shape changer to the Celestial Bureaucrat, but he starts off with, actually it says Water 3, he actually starts off with Water 2 because he counts as in Dragon form. Well if you take an Awake Dragon King, you do have to lose scales. I mean, there's no way around that. You have to lose a bunch of scales. Um, like, you probably have to go into turmoil. But you take 10 water, and you give him a quickness blessing. And if he has quickness, then he himself will be launching 6 attacks per round, with attack 15, defense 16. And your sacreds, your sohays, will be attacking twice per round at attack 14, with defense 14. 
which makes them actually pretty solid. So if you want an awake expander, and Joman having an awake expander is by no means the worst idea, it's a pretty good idea sometimes, then I think this is how you do it. Um, you don't want to tank your scales. In particular, you don't want to tank production. You can tank, you can probably go turmoil two safely. Turmoil three, misfortune three sometimes is a bad combination, but mm, you need extra resources. You also do really need magic. Like magic is important. In fact, Joman is a nation where I might consider lowering growth in order to get another point of magic. Just because research wise, you're going to be super weak until you hit conjuration two or three, which you have to do just as soon as possible and get some gem income, which means you have to have a lot of mages out site searching pretty quickly. And that means of course you have fewer mages researching. Also, you are going to want to go up evocation because there are some evocation spells that are low level enough that your mages will probably be able to cast them. I, uh, but boy, it's a gamble. Like Acid Bolt, Acid Bolt is a pretty solid spell, especially for its low level of research, but woof. I don't think any of your mages, except the ones that get an extra 10% random, can actually cast it. Magma Bolt, your Master Shugenjas, a reasonable fraction of Master Shugenjas can cast Magma Bolts, which isn't a bad spell. It's a decent spell. It's not great, but it's decent. But as you get up to higher levels, you see the problem. There are just so many spells that you absolutely will not have the paths to cast. The only ones that you can really rely on are Nature and Earth. If you have a level 2 Nature spell or a level 3 Earth spell, a level 2 or 3 Earth spell, you'll probably be able to cast it. Later in the game, once you start setting up Communions, you will be able to cast Gifts from Heaven, which is a pretty solid spell. Um, it's incredibly inaccurate, but it does a ton of damage to three separate squares on the battlefield. Your only problem, of course, is not meteoring yourself, which is a risk with Gifts from Heaven. Uh, but once you start pumping out Omyoji, that will prob probably be your strategy. Um, your general strategy as Joman is going to be spam, basically. Uh, none of your mages are cap only. All of your mages are cheap. Master Shugenjas ignore Shugenjas. Uh, Shugenjas are lab monkeys and occasionally sight searchers, and that's it. They're terrible in combat. Except for the fire randoms. The fire randoms are mediocre in combat. But Master Shugenjas are cheap. And Master Shugenjas can be recruited in all highlands and mountains. And Onmyoji can be recruited in all forts. So what you're going to end up doing is just amassing huge, huge quantities of Onmyoji and Master Shugenjas. Uh, and relying on number of mages to overwhelm the superior mage quality that pretty much everybody else has has. On top of that, if your troops can get into melee, they're solid. They really are. Uh, if you look at stat-wise, stat, stat -wise, like Go Hatamoto, Go Hatamoto have a very dangerous attack. Uh, Akaoni Samurai, the red ones, are just statistically outright superior to most human troops of approximately the same price level. The problem is just that darn lack of a shield. If Akaoni Samurai had a shield, they would be fantastic units. Uh, if Sohei, Sohei are okay units. If Sohei had more combat speed and a shield, if Sohei just had a shield, leave the low combat speed. If they had a shield, they'd be extremely solid. <sighs> but as it is, your best troop, as I said, is probably the Samurai Archer. So, playing as Joman, you've got to have some kind of way to expand, which is tricky. You want to get in the water, but you can't let it absorb your attention too much. If you can get into the water in a solid way, great. But you just have to recognize if there's an actual underwater nation in the game that's near you, they're probably going to kick you out because they don't want you having Ryujin and Shark Warriors. And they have no reason to let you stay and you have no way to stop them from kicking you out unless you manage to live down there long enough to actually produce several Ryujin. In which case you have a fighting chance because Ryujin are fantastic water mages and water magic is what rules in underwater slap fights. So a few thoughts. Um, like I said, I'm joining a multiplayer game as Joman. I'm not going to tell you what my pretender is yet. Um, if I decide to play the game on the channel, then of course we'll go over that. But 
in general, I mean, you can play a rainbow. If you take the Onmyo Hakase and play as a rainbow for the purpose of sight searching, especially, that could be an interesting strategy. It's not the best, but it might be a way to really kickstart your gem income early on, and kickstarting gem income is vital for Jomen because Jomen has relatively weak magic and they really depend on being able to get access to their summons and being able to get something to replace their troops, something to bolster their troops, because their troops alone will not cut it in mid-game and late-game fights. Um, you can take an expander. The Dragon King is a suboptimal expander, but probably the best option you have. Uh, the Celestial Dragon is extremely similar, but Astral instead of Water, and the Astral Blesses are not as good. The Celestial Dragon gives you air magic, and I, in my single-player game, I did play air magic for the air shield bless, which costs six air bless points. Overall, I think that's probably a mistake. Um, it does allow you to expand with your sacreds, but that's a lot of points you're spending on just air shield. And I think it's probably more efficient overall to grab a hold of some extra supplies, extra resources, and expand with samurai archers. And you can back them up with the Sohei, um, but I don't think committing to an air shield just for your sacreds is a good idea when your sacreds are A, not great, and B, capital only. Literally your only capital only units. So just some thoughts. Um, I'll talk about Jomen, of course, more if and when I decide to post this game, but it should be exciting. Uh, as I've said, I acknowledge Jomen is a bad nation to be fully honest. They're not great. Uh, they're not competitive with the, the high tier late age nations. Uh, late age Ohm can roll over Jomen pretty easily and painlessly. Uh, late age, oh, there's a bunch of nations. I could be here all day listing nations that in some way have an advantage over Jomen. Pretty much the only nations Jomen can hold off on an even footing or better are the underwater nations if they try to come up on land, and even then Jomen can't stop them from kicking them out of the water. So it'll be an interesting fight. I do kind of enjoy playing underdogs, so I think it'll be it'll be an interesting campaign. And of course if I manage to pull out a win I'll be as surprised as anyone and uh, overjoyed. So thank you all so much for watching this. Uh, look for this sometime in the future, assuming people want to see it. If you don't want to see it, by all means let me know. If you do want to see it, let me know and uh, I'll be happy to post it. So thank you all so much for listening, and I'll see you in the next one.